Dagenham and Redbridge, a side that don't even exist in FIFA 20. But thanks to the power of modding, they now do. We have had the Vanarama National League modded into FIFA 20 career mode here, and we now are going to be playing in the fifth division of English football. A huge thank you to everybody that has been demanding we do this rebuild in the past few videos. It's going to be quite a journey, but for the first time, let's head to the National League. But lads, we are on the grind for 400,000 subscribers and still over 90% of you watching the video right now are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're new around here, make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. If you have not had the pleasure of seeing a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. So the main objective is to win the UEFA Champions League. Every game in the rebuild is simulated except for the Champions League final. The transfers can be as unrealistic or realistic as we like. There's a big focus on the transfer window. And finally, of course, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules, let's get into the rebuild. So this is the starting lineup we have here. Not even sure if, if these are real life players or whether they're just randomly generated players, but as you can see, considerably crap. This is a mid-rated or mid-40s, high 40 rated side. It's gonna be a real challenge. We're gonna have to focus heavily on the Youth Academy here. And I mean, we only have a budget of 156K. Gonna get a little bit more after the preseason, hopefully, but Gregory Korolov, the Russian scout, is the only scout we can afford to hire. So I think it's gonna be a bit of a grind to find all right players. It's taken a little while here, but we have found somebody that is okay. Doesn't look like he's crazy, but Sam Lee, 58 rated, 78 potential. Welcome to the starting lineup. It's funny, someone that's 53 rated automatically becomes one of our highest rated players. Tyler Rose, again, a pretty average potential, but he's gonna be an improvement. And I have actually decided to make a proper signing using the preseason money. I signed Mo Adam from my favorite club in Australia, the Western Sydney Wanderers. Wanna see what we can do with an A-League player over the course of what is sure to be a very, very long rebuild. We've signed him from Bankwest Stadium for 130,000 pounds. So there is no surprise that Mo Adam was the only addition in terms of purchases this transfer window. Gonna keep grinding along though and see if we can sign some players from the Youth Academy. A new goalkeeper into the side here. Not expecting him to be anything crazy, but Elliot Brown, 56 rated. Welcome to Dagenham. Sean Roberts, 56 rated midfielder. Again, nothing crazy, but welcome to the starting lineup. This man sounds like he should be in the next Marvel movie. Like This is what Captain America sounds like, but Lance Alexander signing on. Like I said, not a crazy amount of youth prospects being signed to the side, but we are on the push for promotion up to League 2, sitting currently 4th behind Notts County, Sutton and Woking. And we have actually managed to find a striker out of the Youth Academy. Doesn't happen too often, but Reese Morris is going to join us. Jay Alexander, another addition to our midfield. And again, no surprise to see no transfer business here in the January transfer window. Lads, at the end of Season 1, we have had a brilliant second half of the season and we have been automatically promoted alongside Woking up to League 2, which is absolutely brilliant to see. At the other end of the table, AFC Field have been relegated. Not sure where they would go, but I'm just glad we're not in that position. Unfortunately, with this mod, I can't check and see who won the Carabao Cup, the EFL Cup, all that good stuff. But we'll see that next year, given we're heading to League Two. But we can see that Barcelona have taken down Liverpool to win the Champions League. And Getafe, of all sides, have taken down Man United to win the Europa League. Quick little look at some of the stats in this promotion season. Mo Adam. Starting off beautifully here, 19 goals in League One. You love, sorry, in the National League, I should say. You love to see it. But anyways, that is season number one done and dusted here at Dagenham and Redbridge. We are out of non-league football, back into the professional ranks. Let's crack on into League Two in season two. It is time to add to our defense, Jed Spence, 
the Englishman coming across here from Middlesbrough for £450,000. That's more money than we've had for virtually the entirety of the save. I don't know what it is, but we've actually been given an all right amount of money here getting into League 2. We've managed to be able to, we've had the budget to spend a million pounds on one David Cabal. The uh, Colombian left back is going to sign here. Going to sell on a few of our older players here. Billy Bailey is headed to Warsburg for £100,000. And Oliver Cox is headed to Bury for 44.5k. I have also decided to loan out one of our younger players, Joel Allen, headed to Bromley for the next year. And we have made an addition to the left-hand side of the midfield, Ian van der Heide, the Dutch winger, one of the cooler names I've seen in a while, signing from here in Veen for 780k. Also gonna promote another one of our youth academy players, Isaac Mason, 57 rated coming into the senior squad and Sam Lewis has made the move to Leighton Orient for 61k. Some more business here getting rid of a few players. Joel Mason headed to Finn Harps for 70k and Sam Martin off to China, off to Wuhan. God bless you mate. Also decided to sell Taylor Turner off to Oldham Athletic for 53k. Player departures central here. It's Brandon Cook headed to Carlisle United. But yeah, that's the end of the opening transfer window to kick off season two. A lot more business and a lot more quality business than I expected, but a lot of players leaving the club as well. The goal for this season needs to be survival in League Two. We don't want to go back down to the National League. And this is how the squad currently looks. Brown growing quite nicely, a lot better than I initially expected. But we are in the thick of the relegation battle here. Bury and Woking currently occupying the relegation spots. Morecambe, ourselves, Carlisle, all a little bit ahead. The good thing though is we're two spots out of relegation zone, but we're 13 points clear. So as long as Bury and Woking continue to be absolute dog crap, we should be okay. I have gone ahead and signed another Australian, another A-League player. It is Louis Diarigo from Adelaide United signing on here for 490k. So just the signing of Louis Diarigo from Adelaide United to round out the January transfer window. Get in there, lads. We have survived relegation absolutely comfortably. We finish in 16th position on 52 points, almost double the amount of Morecambe. At the other end of the table, however, it's going to be Colchester, Forest Green, and Mansfield Town all getting out of League 2. Man City have won the FA Cup. Liverpool do win the Carabao Cup. Wigan Athletic win the Leasing.com trophy. And Stevenage are joining the other sides up in League 1. Liverpool win the Champions League. And Manchester United get their revenge. They don't lose a second successive Europa League final. So that's season two done and dusted here at Dagenham and Redbridge, continuing to build the foundations. Need to do it again in season three. I've gone for a look through the free agents like I always tend to do in these sorts of saves. Guido Konechny has shown up here, an Argentinian goalkeeper, already 70 rated. We're going to sign him here. That is an easy move and a big move as well. Now, I have decided to sell one of our Youth Academy products, Reese Morris, headed to Burton Albion for 540k. And that is so we could finance the signing of Falaren Belogan from Arsenal. 1.3 million pounds, a bit of a drop down the footballing pyramid for him, but... We're going to give him plenty of game time and hopefully grow him into the next English striker. Also going to promote another Youth Academy prospect here, Toby Wright, only 51 rated, but he could provide some decent backup in between the sticks. So definitely a much more chilled out transfer window compared to the start of last season, but we've got Konechny, we've got Bulligan into the side, Morris out of it. Very, very keen to see how this side performs. Okay, that's much better than I expected. On the 1st of January, we find ourselves comfortably at the top of League 2. That is a huge improvement given we were in a relegation battle this time last year. Love that. Haven't been able to afford any transfer business here in January. Went pretty crazy in the opening window. But let's see if we can hold on for promotion here in the third season. With absolute style, Dagenham and Redbridge are promoted to League One. We pick up 115 points, just five losses all season. Walsall and Gillingham also coming up with us, but 
That's another promotion. Okay. Headed down to non-league football, however, are going to be Carlisle United and Crawley Town. Liverpool do win another FA Cup. Man City win another Carabao Cup. Sunderland actually get some silverware winning the Leasing.com trophy. And Accrington Stanley are going to be promoted up to League One with us next year. It's a Champions League title here for Barcelona. And it's a Europa League title here for Arsenal. The growth on some of our players this season has been insane. Lee is already up to a 72 rating, which is phenomenal given I think his potential initially was like 78 or 79. So could be all right. But anyways, we're headed up from the fourth to the third division in season number four. Very keen to see if we can hold on and continue to build out the squad. Season number four is going to begin with an improvement in the back line. Here it is, Armel Bella Kotchap, the German defender, signing on here from Bochum for 1.6 million pounds. There must be something with this National League mod, but we have found an absolute stud in the free agents list. If we thought we struck gold with the goalkeeper last year, we have just struck absolute diamonds here. And Lozano Vizette, 18 years of age, 79 overall. The Spanish attacking midfielder was available on a free. If you guys can figure out whose regen this would be, we're four years in. What Spanish attacking mid? Maybe David Silva. This could be David Silva's regen. But regardless, we now have a 79 rated 18 year old playing for us in League One. Oh my. Safe to say when you're making those bigger signings, you can only make a few. We've signed Bella Cocha, we've signed Lozano Viziete, and that is our business done for this opening window in season four. He's already grown to an 80 overall and sticks out like an absolute sore thumb in our starting lineup, but that is gonna give us a huge boost in not only surviving relegation, but potentially pushing for promotion. Here's the hoping. Our hoping is on a good trajectory at the moment. We find ourselves fourth in League One. QPR and Barnsley currently top in the uh, promotion spots, the automatic promotion spots, but we are in a playoff spot at the moment. Fingers crossed. Have decided to part ways with one of our youth academy prospects here, Tyler Rose, headed to Serie B, Citadea, for 1.65 mil. And we have signed an improvement, another upgrade in the back line, Nathan Collins, the Irishman, coming down from Stoke City for a smidge over two million pounds. I'm not signing this guy, but this Ryan Hall fella was at Macclesfield. What are they doing? Macclesfield had an 85 rated player who they've sold for 63.9 million pounds. They're gonna be rich, surely. There it is, a very defensive window for us. Collins in, Rose out. Let's see if it's a championship promotion in store for us here at Dagenham and Redbridge. We are the kings of the second half of the season. We have absolutely wiped the floor here in League One and have been promoted with comfort up to the championship, finishing two points ahead of QPR and 10 points ahead of Barnsley. So it is back-to-back -back promotions and back-to-back -back league titles for us here. Let's go, Dagnum. At the other end of the table, however, Blackpool, Shrewsbury, Lincoln City, and Walsall all down to League 2. Man United get their hands on the FA Cup, but they can't get their hands on the Carabao Cup. We lose in the Leasing.com Trophy Final on penalties to Akin Fenwa and the Wiccan Wanderers. And it is Barnsley, they're going to be joining us in League in the Championship next year. A Champions League title for Man City and another Europa League Championship or Europa League title for Man United. We're on our way to the Championship. Let's go lads, Dagenham and Redbridge from 5th Division to the 2nd Division. Oh, it's getting good. Sean Roberts has been here since the early days, but we've sent him on a German adventure off to Nuremberg for 8.6 million pounds. And that's so we can make another upgrade in the midfield. We've brought in an upgraded English talent. Trevor Chalabar has come from Huddersfield for 11.8 million 
million pounds. Welcome to Dagenham and Redbridge, mate. So that's the transfer window here. Done and dusted for the championship. A defensive midfielder in, a center midfielder out. It's still a good upgrade. The growth of some of our players has been brilliant though. And this side has gone for um, mid 40s to an average of the low to mid 70s in what, five seasons? That is insane progress. And we're actually in the hunt for Premier League promotion in this season. I thought back-to-back -back promotions would be done and like that would be enough. And I thought we'd be in the relegation battle this year, but we currently occupy fifth position in the championship. What, what's that? 15 or no, 17 points away from promotion. Might be a bit more of a challenge, but they're doing a lot better than I expected. Not content with that, however, Jed Spence, he's been here again since League Two days, but we've sent him to Galatasaray for 7.2 mil. And we've gone ahead and signed Steven Sessignon for 8.7 million pounds. Originally a Fulham man, now off to Ale from AC Milan, now to Dagenham and Redbridge. So just like the opening window, it's been a straight swap in positions. Spence out, Sessignon in. So the rest of the pack have kind of grown ahead of us in the second half of this season. We finish well tr and truly out of a playoff spot. 30 points between ourselves and second place West Brom, but we now face off with Brentford, Bristol City, and Leeds United in the playoffs. At the other end of the table, however, it is Bar sorry, QPR, Derby, and Blackburn all relegated. Manchester City have won the FA Cup. Manchester United win the Carabao Cup. We have been promoted in scintillating style absolutely manhandling Leeds United and getting promoted for the third successive season up to the Premier League. I did not expect to get promoted this quickly. We just 4-0 in the final. We murdered them. It is another Champions League success here for Barca and Leverkusen win a penalty shootout to become Europa League champions. Falaren Bolligan absolutely killed it for us this season. 21 goals for the Englishman, really turning himself into a decent striking prospect. The rest of the side is like Sam Lee, 17 goals from right mid is absolutely brilliant. So we are up into the Premier League a lot quicker than I expected. But you know what? I am not complaining. Dagenham and Redbridge from non-league to the Premier League. This is a sign of intent. We're in the Premier League and we're not here to fuck spiders. We are here to stay. We have signed Bukio Saka from Arsenal for 25.2 million pounds. I mean, I've gone very one dimensional. I've been laser focused signing Saka here. Bukio Saka, 25.2 million pounds. Nobody out of the squad. Oh, our run of form in terms of just being unstoppable is coming to an end because we are back into the dogfight. We are back into the trenches, currently occupying 17th position in the Premier League, just one point ahead of Burnley. Thankfully, Huddersfield and West Brom are making life a little bit easier for us, but a lot of work for us to do if we want to avoid relegation. We're getting our asses into gear here. Armel Balakopchap Kotchap is leaving the club, heading down to Southampton for 10.7 million pounds. I have also decided to sell Arjen van der Heide to Vallecano in the Spanish La Liga for 10.5 mil. There's got to be something with these regens because I was looking through centre-backs to sign and there was an absolute abundance of decent talent, but we have secured the services of the Welsh defender, Sam Williams, 22 years of age, 82 overall. We have signed him from VFL Wolfsburg for 39.9 million pounds. Definitely overpaid in the short term, but I think long term it's gonna be well and truly worth it. So there we go, a significant addition to our back line with Williams coming into the side. Vela Kotchap and Van der Heide both out of the team. Will it be enough to avoid relegation? We're gonna have to wait and see, lads. Yes, it is. It was not comfortable, but it has been done. We finished six points out of relegation. Burnley and Wolves below us. Wolves, Huddersfield, and West Brom all being relegated, however. At the other end of the table, Manchester United have gone invincible and have been Centurions. 
That is unreal. Man United have also won the FA Cup. They're killing it. But Man City have won the Carabao Cup. Atletico Madrid win an all Spanish Champions League final. And Liverpool have a replay of that night in Istanbul, taking down AC Milan to win a major European final. In terms of growth, it is good to see a lot of players continuing their rapid growth. Lozano Vizzietti up to an 87, which is unbelievable. So there we go. We have completed our objective of surviving in the Premier League here in our first season. Now we need to make sure that we do not suffer second season syndrome. Please, please. It's time to say goodbye. I had big and wild ambitions of Mo Adam getting absolutely cranked up with dynamic player potential, but unfortunately, whilst he has exceeded expectations, he hasn't been able to keep up with the team. I've decided to sell Mo Adam to Bournemouth for 23.5 million pounds. And we have gone bang, Mason Greenwood joining us here at Dagenham and Redbridge, 62.8 flipping pounds for an 85 rated striker. That is unreal. Welcome, Mason. I am gonna go ahead and sign a few regen players here. I don't expect them to be anything crazy. We've got Cousins, Fuchs, and Furhart. Now I'm a little bit confident, actually I'm more than a little bit confident that that is Riyad Mahrez's regen, so he could actually turn into something decent. But there we go, a lot of players into the club, a lot of additions, a lot of big additions, and I fully don't expect us to be a part of the relegation battle this season, please not. I mean, this is the side, definitely certain areas are peaking ahead of others. You look at Lozano, you look at Saka, you look at Greenwood, even Cabal and Williams. A little bit ahead of the rest of the squad, but we'll assess come January where we need big improvements and who's really fallen behind. We're not fully safe from the relegation battle here in season seven. We are sitting in 12th position on 28 points. Thankfully, Brentford are 18 points behind us. So, so far, so good. But you can't be over cocky, definitely in FIFA 20. We have decided, however, to upgrade in between the sticks. I found this guy, it could be Hugo Lloris' regen or it could just be some random computer generated player, but it's Jules Malsa. I have no idea how to pronounce that last name. I'm just gonna call him Jules. We have signed the crown Jules for 31.3 million pounds from Man City. And it's gonna be Guido Konechny is out of the club, off to Club Bruges for 18.9 million pounds. So it's a fully goalkeeper focused window, but my God, we've made some improvements. Let's see if that can help us climb up the table. No, we've actually gone down a spot, but it's okay because we have comfortably survived relegation here. 47 points, a mid table Premier League finish, Brentford, Norwich, and Crystal Palace are all packing their bags and fucking off. Man United, another Premier League title for them, my god. Man United have won the FA Cup as well. What is going on at Old Trafford? They couldn't get the treble though. They've lost the Carabao Cup final to Chelsea. Leverkusen upgrade from a Europa League to a Champions League. And Roma are the Europa League champions this year. The growth continues with his Dagenham and Redbridge side. It's all I want. All I want is forward motion with the team. That's season seven done. Let's see if we can hopefully maybe make a push for European football in season eight. I have decided that we need some more improvements in the midfield. So Trevor Chalabar is out of the club, off to Man United, probably gonna get some silverware for himself here but we've sold him for 35.2 mil. And that is so we could finance the signing of Ryan Gravenbert. We have brought him across from Ajax. And you wanna know why I wanted to finance him and why I couldn't afford him? Because this man had a release clause of 3.85 million pounds. We have paid absolute pennies for this bloke. Oh, I love that in career mode when a big player starts off as a nobody really, and his club don't renew his contract. 3.85 million pounds. Ajax, you have been finessed. We have decided to sell Jay Alexander here to Udinese for 17.8 million pounds as well. One of the OG players. And we've made a huge upgrade in the back line. West Ham had their hands on this Italian weapon of a defender. 
and I've just paid out of my absolute ass to get him. But it is an end game player because at age 21, we have signed 85 rated Ordero from West Ham United, 71.8 million pounds. Man looks like an absolute weapon. So an unreal transfer window, the type of transfer window that is gonna help us qualify hopefully for European football. And I mean, this side in eight seasons is just something else. Certain areas still lacking behind, but for the majority, this side is unreal. Cabal as well. Very surprised to see him up to an 85, but I'm not complaining. Only a slight improvement on where we were last season. We currently occupy that 11th position, finding it difficult to break into that top half of the league, which I find odd given how good our side is now. Unfortunately, no additions to the side here in January. Was considering selling Sessignon, but have decided against it for the meanwhile, or for the time being. So we'll crack on and see if we can get higher up that table here in the back end of the eighth season. I mean, we have gotten into the top half of the table, but it's only to ninth position. A few different results there, and we probably would have ended up in a European spot in terms of Europa League, but it's all good. It's growth, and that's all I can ask for. Man City, though, they have gotten back to the top of the table, undefeated, invincibles, and they've also gone and become centurions once again. So there's something in the water up north in Manchester. In terms of the relegation battle, however, it is Brighton, Leeds, and Wolves all relegated. Man City have torn United a new one in the FA Cup final, 5-1. And it is Liverpool winning the Carabao Cup 2-1 over Chelsea. Another Champions League title here for Atletico Madrid. And Tottenham Hotspur have taken down Manchester United to win the Europa League final. So that is season eight done and dusted. It's about time we start making a serious, serious push for Champions League football, at least Europa League football, but preferably Champions League football. So we have decided that an upgrade at the right back spot was necessary. Thomas Tavares has signed here from Newcastle United for 32.8 million pounds. And because of that, Steven Sessignon has been sold to Juve, but the, the satisfying part of that is we've sold him for more than we bought Tavares. He's a year older than Tavares and two overall less. That is wheeling and dealing in my opinion. I feel like in a lot of these transfer windows, I've just done a one for one deal in a certain position. And once again, I'm guilty of it here in season number nine. Right back window, Tavares in, Sessignon out. Remember what I said that I thought we should be making a push for potentially Europa League football? Well, 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 well. We are in the hunt for the title. We've gone from ninth to currently second. I am not complaining at all. In a move that might piss off some of you guys, I have sold Florin Balogun here to Manchester United for 101 million pounds. He's 86 rated, but I feel like with 101 million pounds, we can go get someone even higher rated. Thank you for your service, Florin, but Time to go. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We have signed what I believe is the regen of Cristiano Ronaldo, Jose Humberto Pace Texera, the Portuguese striker, has signed from PSG for 114.7 million pounds. He's five years younger than Bulligan and one overall higher. Oh my god, look at all those 99 stats. That is unreal. I've also decided to sign Tyler Adams here from Arsenal for 35.9 million pounds as a backup. We've got an 86 rated player as a backup defensive midfielder. That's when you know our side's unreal. So an absolutely cranked out transfer window here. Texera and Adams into the side, Balogun out. Oh my God. It is not enough to be Premier League champions, however. We finish the season on 101 points, three losses, and have still finished second. That would have got us the league title the past few years, but unfortunately, Man City were just that little bit better than us. All good though, because we are in the Champions League in season 10. Three clubs not in the Premier League for season 10, however, are gonna be Palace, 
Fulham and Huddersfield. We finally get some silverware. Dagenham and Redbridge, FA Cup champions. We take down Man City 2-0. Come on. But it is going to be Liverpool, your Carabao Cup champ. Atletico Madrid get their hands on another Champions League title. And Roma win an all-Italian Europa League final. Lozano, you need to chill, my man. This man is now 96 rated and has scored 34 goals this season. Thank you very much. Things are going absolutely brilliantly here in season number nine. This team is unbelievable. And with our first taste of Champions League football coming up next season, I, I think there's no reason why we can't have a deep run, surely. Season 10 begins with a player departure, Nathan Collins. I wanted him to be a reserve defender for us, but when Madrid are offering 68 mil for him, you have to accept that. So he's off to the Santiago Bernabeu, and we're 68 million pounds richer. Okay, this is unreal. I'm, I don't think, I mean, it could be, could be cooler Barley's regen, or it could just be a computer generated free agent through this mod. But Musa Diallo, 93 rated at age 21. What is doing there? We have signed him for 140 million pounds from Liverpool. That is unbelievable. Still pretty shook up from that Diallo signing, but I've decided to bring in a backup striker here to back up Texera and Greenwood. We've signed Miguel for 22.5 million pounds from Montpellier. So there we go, definitely focused on quality and quantity, or qu I should say quality over quantity, but you can't really make a huge quantity of signings when you spend 140 mil on a defender. And I mean, this side just looks absolutely unreal. I've actually decided to play Adams in that right back spot instead of Tavares, because Adams can play defensive mid and right back, but this team is just cranked. Lozano's 96 rated. Get out of it. We've been handed a moderately difficult group. I mean, Leverkusen and Roma have been popping up all rebuild long for winning Champions Leagues and Europa Leagues. So it's a good test to see what we're made of. But I do expect us, given the fact we've got some of the world's best players, to get out of this group. Let's find out. Let's simulate Group G of the Champions League in three, two, one. With absolute ease. Okay. We have gone undefeated in the Champions League group stages. That is brilliant to see. Four wins, two draws, no losses. We're into the round of 16. A monster, monster, monster challenge for us here in the round of 16, however. We have Atletico Madrid. They have won so many Champions Leagues. This is going to be a huge test to see what we're made of. We currently find ourselves top of the Premier League table, however. Would love to go ahead and win the chair, the Premier League this season. No losses as well. That would be good. Again, no real surprise to see we've done no business in this January transfer window. Hopefully what we have now is going to be enough. But we're going to get put to the test as we take on Atletico Madrid. All right, lads. Here we go. The away leg is up first in the round of 16 here. The big thing we need is to get away goals on the board. Now, the good thing about this mod is that it has the traditional clock. So we're going to watch that here. Get to watch it in real time and see how we go. Get to ride the emotion, which I love. It's yellow card there for Hlozek from Atletico Madrid. They've got a good side. Oblak still in between the sticks, which is surprising. Felix would be in the mid-90s surely by now. Nothing happening at the moment. We don't have any away goals on the board yet. As we move into the final 15 minutes, is it going to remain a nil-nil draw? Yes, it is. Nil-nil here in the first leg, which plays into Atletico Madrid's hands much more than ours. All right, lads, the second leg is up here. Back in Dagenham and Redbridge. I don't even know what part of England Dagenham and Redbridge is, but we've got a big challenge. If we can see the goal, we're in big strife. A clean sheet is priority number one. Is it going to be another nil-nil draw? Nothing really happening in the opening half an hour here. If it stays nil-nil... Yes, we take the lead through Texera, which means extra time is out of the question. Cabal makes it 2-0. The left back. We are 2-0 up now. Oh, okay. It's back on for them. Shalov gets a penalty. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, we do. 
Oh, we're through to the quarterfinals. We take down Atletico Madrid. They had me quite worried there when Shalov got that penalty, but it's all good. We're through to the quarters. Let's go. In the quarterfinals, we are going to have the opportunity to face the old lady. We're going to first Juventus and Steven Sessegnon. I mean, you get to this point of the career mode and the Champions League, and most teams left are going to be unreal challenges. But Juve are just a different level. Here we go, lads. At home for the first leg against Juve. A clean sheet is priority number one. If we can keep nil-nil scoreline like we did in the first leg against Atletico, that would be A-OK. -okay. But they take the lead in the sixth minute through this guy, the Polish guy. Maybe Lewandowski's regen. Graven Birch with the yellow, but we get an equalizer there through Texera. Cabal is scoring for fun. Puts us 2-1 up here. Adam's got yellow carded as well. A third goal for us would be great. If they score a second, no! Sucker makes it 3-1. Advantage, Dagenham. Let's keep it to one goal. Yes, we do. 3-1 in the first leg against Juve. So, we do have the lead. Worryingly, though, they do have that away goal on the board. So, we're going to have to make sure that we can get ourselves a goal. Because, for example's sake, if Juve win this 2-0 then they are going to go through an away goals rule. They miss a penalty in the first minute. Jesus Christ. That's worrying. Come on, let's get ourselves an away goal on the board. Golovin with a yellow card for them. Come on, every second that goes past plays into our advantage. Jovic. Oh, shit, it's game on. Oh, crap. It's 3-2 on aggregate. Come on, let's get ourselves an away goal. Final 10, please hold on. Please hold on. Don't make it 2-0. There it is. Oh my God. Thank God that guy missed the penalty in the first minute. We're through to the semis by the absolute skin of our teeth. Semi-final time in season number 10. We are versing Real Madrid. Oh, come on, lads. We have looked extremely shaky throughout these knockout rounds. If we're going to have a dominant performance, please let it be here against Real Madrid. Again, you guys know the rules. We want a clean sheet for this first leg at home. Come on. Strong start would be nice. They've got Collins in their starting 11. Our former man. Hopefully he doesn't bite us in the backside. Then Dembele up front for them. I feel like a lot of these games have started off slow. It's a nil-nil draw right now, which does play into our hands. We're in the second half. Miguel comes on for Greenwood. Nothing happening at the moment. We take the lead through Texera. Good, 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 good. Come on, hold on. Keep a clean sheet, clean sheet, clean sheet. Take clean sheet to the Bernabeu, which is exactly what we do. 1-0 up, headed into the second leg against Real Madrid. Oh, it's now or never, lads. Away at the Bernabeu, not wasting any time. Getting right into this one, lads. If we get an away goal, we are in a huge advantage. We are 1-0 up the longer that goes by the better but this could be right on for madrid greenwood gets us an away goal let's go mace come on birchvine gets them back into it oh dear graven birch gets us back in a strong advantage surely we're three one up surely that's going to be a champions league berth for us dagenham and red bridge are headed for the champions league final three one Oh, 3-1 over Real Madrid. We've taken down Atletico and Real, two Spanish juggernauts. Now it's time for the trifecta. It is Barcelona versus Dagenham and Redbridge in the 2029, the Season 10 Champions League Final. Oh my God. Taking a look around the grounds at the other results, Man United won the Europa League. We win the Premier League. Surprisingly, we had a worse season then last season, but have finished on 99 points and a Premier League champion for the first time ever. At the other end of the spectrum, however, it is Norwich, Brighton and Wolves all relegated. We lose the Community Shield to Manchester City. We can't go back to back in the FA Cup. That's Liverpool who are winning it this year. And it is Chelsea who win the Carabao Cup. So here is a look at our squad report as we get into the Champions League final. I am absolutely in love with this team. It just proves the point. Like, lads, every time I feel like that we do a Youth Academy-focused rebuild, it just turns out to be so goddamn enjoyable. I'm so keen to use some of these lads in-game. Hopefully, they can help us get a result here. But we are absolutely killing it. We've got a great side here. Who would have thought we'd come this far in 10 seasons? 
giving Dagenham and Redbridge fans a little bit of hope all around the world. But lads, it is time for the Season 10 Champions League Final. Barcelona, Dagenham and Redbridge, let's get it done. It is showtime. Barcelona versus Dagenham Redbridge. Let's get the club a title. Barca are on the attack early here. Overcommitted players there. Oh no, they've gone through. They've squid it. Oh my god, that's the worst possible start. I've just been outclassed there. Pure and simply, overcommitted too many players and outclassed. Barca are just a different level here. Thankfully, got it back. Counter. No! I'm just not locked in this morning. They've gone through and they've made it too. This is not what we wanted. We're 2 0 down after 25 minutes. Oh my. Barcelona, honestly, tearing us a new one. Oh, I've just got to stop giving it to them as well. They go in. They've gone through. Just jockey, jockey blocked. They hit it blocked. Oh, it's falling out to them again. They just keep getting every friggin' bounce. They've gone through. They shoot. We should be 3-0 behind there. I need to wake up. Come on, let's just go into the sheds 2-0 down. Do not let them get another opportunity here. They go in. They get the header. They save it. Get the follow-up. Don't. Get it away. Get it away. Good. Barca have started this second half off the same way they started the first, but... We might be able to hit him on the counter here. Looking for some options. Good runs being made. Great ball. He's got the pace there. Lozano. Keepers off his line. Chances. It's on. Game on. Lozano. When he's got 99 in every single stat. He's just going to murder it like that. It is game on here in the Champions League final. We do not deserve to be in this game either. Come on, lads. If we can bring this back this quickly, I would be absolutely over the moon. Going through. Shoots it. Scores it. Lozano. Oh, we do not deserve it. Lozano has gone ahead. Oh, my God. It's 2 on the Champions League final. How? How, 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 how? Barcelona looking to play it out from the back. We've had a good second half here, but we can't let them. Good tackle. I was about to say we can't let them score in the 89th minute. We go through. Look at the defense. Defense is off the line. Greenwood. Through. We score it. We're 89th minute. We're up in the Champions League final. Oh my god! Oh, let's go and celebrate with the manager. I cannot... I, this is too good to be true. This might be the best win in rebuild history. 2-0 and you fucked it up, boss. Oh my god! You can't make this shit up, lads. We've won the Champions League final after being 2-0 down. That is, I can already see the comment section blowing up in terms of accusing me of match fishing or something. I am in shock. We've done it. This might be the best rebuild in rebuild history from non-league to the Champions League final and then to win it the way we did. That is unreal. Lads, if any rebuild ever deserves a like, I think it's this one. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Enjoy these title celebrations. It's been Jared HD. I'm out. Peace.